today we're going to do a presentation on effective classroom management. As you know, uh, we have had some issues with different behaviors that have been exhibited in the building and we want to make sure that you guys are equipped with some professional development to help you along the way in your classroom and help us to decrease our discipline within the building. Okay, so as you know, we have our community norms. We ask that you please be responsible and make sure that you take care of your needs. If you have to step to the restroom or to silence your devices, please do so now. Be respectful, remain open to all perspectives in the room. Something that you know one person might be dealing with might be different from another, so we ask that you please um, be respectful to others and their truth, and also speak yours respectfully. And lastly, to be engaged. Uh, we want you to ask any questions that you have so that we can make sure that you have a clear understanding of the content and any tips and strategies that we're gonna present to you today. All right. So the part, first part of this is the classroom matrices and our PBIS fidelity practices. So we're going to work on teacher classroom um, expectations and matrices, and then we're going to work on implementing PBIS with fidelity. Okay? Moving along. So as you guys, I know this is familiar to you, we have our PBIS pyramid, and PBIS means positive behavior, intervention, and supports. So as you see our pyramid, we have our tier one, which is gonna be 80% of our population that is implementing these strategies with fidelity. And this means that we're gonna teach academics the same way that we're gonna teach behaviors because the same way we have to teach content, we have to teach students our expectations on how we want them to behave in the classroom. And then we have our tier two, which is about 15% of our population and with those students they might be having some difficulty as they're learning the behavior expectations and with those students we're going to add in some additional supports to ensure that they can be recycled back down to tier one and then we have our tier three tier three are those students of five percent of our population who may need some intensified one-on-one coaching and supports and interventions with these students, we might have our FBAs, which is our Functional Behavior Assessments, and our BIPs, our Behavior Intervention Plans. These students will more than likely have wraparound services where we're bringing in any um, outside uh, stakeholders and parents, um, different agencies, um, community agencies that can help them with their um, issues that they may be having in school or um, in, um, environmental issues that they may be having at home. So this is kind of the premise of our PBIS structure on how we teach behaviors. Now, the main thing I want you guys to pay attention with this is the middle arrow here, and it says that we're going to make all of our decisions data-based. So, we're never going to deal with the student or change things if we don't have some data to support while we're doing that. And if we want to make sure that even when we have our data, that we have adequate documentation to support while we're making these changes or implementing new strategies and skills. All right, so we have our blended model. Now in our blended model, we have our academic competencies, which you guys are well equipped with, and then we have our behavior competencies. Now we pretty much, we've structured things that we're working to implement with Fidelity, our behavior competencies, but we're also gonna add in the social emotional competencies. Basically, the same way that we have to equip ourselves as adults with the skills that we have to manage our emotions, we're gonna implement skills and strategies into our kids so they can do the same thing, okay? All right, so here we have a sample of our school-wide matrix. And with the school-wide matrix, this is just a sample. So we have SOAR, which is safety, ownership, attitude, and respect. So how do we show those things in our school building? We have to make sure that we explicitly teach students how to behave in every area of the building. So in this classroom matrix, I'm sorry, this um, school-wide matrix, we have hallways, restroom, cafeteria, playground, and then the bus ramp. We want to make sure that we're not telling them what not to do, but we're telling them what they should do. So we're not going to have any negative talking here to say, do not or don't use. We're going to tell them that they should walk safely and quiet down the hallway or use appropriate language while in the school building. So we want to make sure that our school-wide major is using positive language. And then, along with our school-wide matrix, this is what you guys are gonna be working on, is your individual classroom matrices. The same way that we wanna explicitly teach students how to behave in a school building, we want them to learn the different areas and transitions that they will have in your classrooms. And so everything from when the student walks in your 
classroom till the time that they walk out, there should be some type of instructional expectation on how they should behave during that time in your class. So whether they have small groups for our English class, whether they're having labs um, for a science class, or even just one a, a peer to peer in math class, we should have some type of expectation on how they should exhibit behaviors during this time. This is how we start to begin to structure our classroom management systems, okay? So in this model, we have to ensure, if you remember when we started with our community norms, we had respectful, responsible, and safe. So you wanna make sure that whatever you have for your school-wide matrix that it matches the same expectations of your classroom matrix. And so here we have arrival, lecture, group, and dismissal. And we wanna make sure that they share all the expectations, again, of what's happening in your individual classroom. And so we have place your homework in the bin upon entering class. That's being respectful. Be quiet while listening to others speak. Again, being respectful. And I wanna skip down to safety. It says, be prepared with your materials in your seat. So if this is an expectation for your classroom, this will avoid students have to get up for unnecessary movements in your classroom will also decrease the likelihood of disruptive behaviors happening in your class, okay? So your first activity to take back with you once you leave the faculty unit today, we're gonna to give you blank copies of um, classroom matrices and we want you to, to complete those based on the transitions and activities in your class and submit those via email to the administration. Do we have any questions thus far? No, ma'am. All right, great. So we're gonna go ahead and move on. So more on fidelity. We want you to incorporate behavior into your curriculum. What does that mean? So the same way that we've asked that you complete your classroom matrices, we wanna ask you to also complete a schedule of your teaching, your expectations. That means even in your lesson plans, the same way you're gonna teach your content, you're gonna teach behaviors. So whether it's three to five minutes at the beginning of class or maybe one to two minutes before each transition or, or change of lesson, you wanna make sure that you're teaching the expectations to your students on what you're wanting them to do as far as the content and the behavior. Ensure that your major is posted in all areas of the building so students and parents can view it easily. So if we're in an elementary school, are we gonna have our posters high on the wall? No, ma'am. No, because our little people cannot see that high and nor are they trying to look up that high. So we wanna make sure that all of our posters and our matrices are, are visible so that people can readily see them and read them. And we wanna also make sure that we're using a language talk that is appropriate for our age groups, okay? So we're not gonna say expeditiously for our little people, we're gonna say move quickly. All right, all right. so ensure that the lessons are being taught on the first two weeks of school and make sure that we have booster sessions along the way and develop your classroom matrix so that it shows the who, what, when, and how, right? This is how we begin to record our data. And remember, consistency matters. You cannot begin a new strategy for these kids to learn one day and then totally abort the mission the following week. We have to be consistent in what we're doing to change the behaviors of our students, okay? All right, so creating your system and learning a little bit about social emotional learning. So we have touched a little bit on social emotional, but I wanted to um, gain some attention to our PBI structure that shows here on this slide. We want to identify and define behavior expectations. This goes back to our classroom matrices. And then we want to teach those expectations so that we can begin to change the behavior. Anything that you consistently do will eventually become a habit. Absolutely. All right, and then we want to monitor the expected behavior to ensure that what we're teaching is actually being exhibited. And then we want to make sure that we have a knowledge and a, the appropriate behaviors as they're being exhibited. So this is where we get to our behavior-specific phrase. And then as we go on, we want to establish a continuum of responsive to behavior and reteaching. All that is, is going by your schedule and making sure that you're having your booster sessions for your kids. So you just can't teach one day. You have to be consistent and reteaching, reteaching, reteaching. And lastly, use your data in your decision making. We cannot say this enough. All right, so coming to this session, we ask that you guys assess your practices in your classroom. What um, effective classroom management skills are you already using and what is working for you at this time in your class? 
And during this session, we want you to take notes on any new strategies that you feel will be helpful. And then lastly, we want you to make sure that you reach out to our team so that we can go ahead and schedule your coaching to ensure that you're getting some feedback as you start to implement these new classroom management skills. All right, so the first thing we want to touch on as we begin to change our climate so that we can improve classroom management is collective teacher efficacy. What this is, is making sure that we all share the same vision and goal, which is to have student success. And so when we have our beliefs in check and we are on the same page, our students will begin to see the same things. And so that every teacher is doing the same positive reinforcements in their class as far as acknowledgement, teaching expectations, and changing behaviors, will as a school be on the same road for our tier one fidelity practices. Outside agencies that are in the building, so that goes to, to our therapeutic day treatment services, our school counselor, our behavior specialist, and our academic coaches. And then we want to make sure that our staff are on a, co a cohesive um, level, meaning that we are all working together to achieve our goals. And then we have our responsiveness to leadership and effective systems of interventions. This goes to our resource mapping and making sure that we know which levels that we should be uh, sending students to our supports and interventions. I then want to uh, share this book with you guys as we get to talking about behavior interventions. This is a behavior intervention manual. This is a great resource to you guys when it comes down to um, breaking down interventions based on specific behaviors that are in your classrooms. We're gonna order these guys for each content level and we want you to definitely utilize this because when we're asking you to decrease on the referral intake for the behaviors in your classroom, this is gonna be a big part in how you structure discipline and managing disciplines in your classroom. So we're gonna make sure that everybody has a copy of this based on content area. Okay, so basically the premise of how we deal with PBIS in our buildings, we wanna support the staff in creating systems in your classroom which will create better classroom management skills. And this is what we're gonna ask our students to respond to based on the practices that they'll be utilizing. All of this is forced by, enforced by data, and then our data will help us to get to our desired outcomes. All right, and as far as teaching professional learning, as you guys continue to do professional development with um, your coaches or the administration, we're gonna demonstrate the skills and strategies that we want you guys to utilize in your classrooms offer you um, practice and feedback, and then we're gonna do follow-up coaching with you guys to make sure that not only that skills are being implemented to improve your classroom management skills, but that if we need to implement or change any strategies based on the behaviors that you see in your class. Okay, so the fun part, we get into our tips and strategies. So, as we get into diffusing disruptive behaviors, I want you guys to remember that we ordered these books for you guys in the beginning of the school year. We did a book study on it. So we wanna make sure that you're utilizing the skills that are in your diffusing disruptive behaviors in the classroom book. So we have a few tips and tricks for you guys to use. Plan ignoring. Basically, if a student is doing something that's not stopping you from teaching, what is the rule? Keep teaching. We want you to keep teaching. Redirect, give silent signals, one-on-one -on -one conference with students outside of the classroom or after class. Sometimes it might take for a class um, change through guidance to help decrease behaviors. Acknowledgement, 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 and build healthy relationships. You have to build community in your classroom to be able to, to reach your students. And then sometimes we have that broken record where things are being done repetitive, repetitively, but you want to, we want you to utilize your resources and always get family involvement. And here are our classroom management survival tips. Make your system stick. So basically everything that we're discussing with you guys, we want you to be consistent in your practices and make sure that it's taught with fidelity. Be mindful of your physical arrangement in your class. A lot of uh, behaviors happen because students are allowed the space and opportunities to kind of move around and cause disruption. So we want to be mindful of the physical arrangement. Always have active supervision because we teach from our feet, not from our seat. Always um, give your students opportunities to respond so they'll know that they also have a voice and a way to show you that they know the content in your classrooms. Formative assessment, 
Always make sure that you are gauging the students to know if they're actually maintaining and obtaining the content that you're teaching and the, and the lesson that's being taught from day to day. Scaffolding, we wanna make sure that we're, put, that we're gonna give an intervention for a student that they're not staying at that same level. So if we're gonna provide intervention, we wanna see a change so that, again, this is where our classroom management is actually working. And then the acknowledgement and behavior specific praise. <laughs> Always let students know when they're doing an awesome job and then tell them why, call them by name. And then we have error correction and build a community through feedback. Again, this is just making sure that the students know what's happening, parents know what's happening, and even the administration. And avoid tracking behaviors. We don't want things listed on the board, Billy, you're bad, Susan, you did a horrible job. Make sure that we're doing that in a confidential way so the students will not feel embarrassed in the classroom. And then we wanna build positive relationships with students and parents. And we have a few quotes that we wanna share with you guys. Praise in public, correct in private, consistency matters, and building positive relationships is the beginning to positive change. All right, our next steps as you guys are prepared to leave today, just make sure that you are reviewing your classroom, make sure you complete the activities that we have listed for you guys, utilize your resources, also remember your transformative classroom management books that we ordered for you guys, and also the seven keys to a positive learning environment in your classroom. Guys, these are great, great, great resources for you guys. We want you to utilize them. And also, you'll get an evaluation tool after this presentation. All right, thank you guys, and we have a great learning day.